Coming up on MCTV this week, President Ditzler went out on a ledge to raise money for the college, and we also show you some unusual talent. This week starts now. Welcome to MCTV This Week with Haley Turner. I'm Michelle Nutting. Thanks for joining us. Raising money and repelling off buildings is no challenge for the Monmouth College president. This morning, President Maury Ditzler repelled four stories down the side of HT. This fundraising challenge was prompted by the Board of Trustees to raise $50,000 for the new Science and Business Building. <laughs> College officials believe groundbreaking on the new Science and Business Building will begin sometime this summer. The word hate is a strong word that may hurt a lot of people. On April 7th, students and faculty had the opportunity to see just how much that word can hurt. The presentation on the impact of hate covered controversial issues such as the hardships of being discriminated against, whether it be for reasons of race, religion, or sexual orientation. Video clips were shown of local East Peoria hate groups to illustrate the closeness of the problem at hand. In addition, there was also a Q&A session at the end which students and faculty were able to voice their questions. I think it's important at all campuses, uh, whether it be Monmouth College or any college in the state of Illinois, uh, to take responsibility for creating a safe learning environment for all students, uh, whether they be uh, students of different ethnic, uh, different religious, or students with different sexual orientations. Uh, you know, it's important to have that uh, ability to go to class uh, to get an education without you know, feeling uh, you know, that you might be harassed or discriminated against. Last Thursday, Students Organized to Unite People, or SOUP, held a seminar about the National Day of Silence. On this day, students nationwide took a vow to be silent in order to bring attention to name-calling, bullying, and harassment in schools. It's all about bringing awareness and it can be within one person, it can be within five people. If somebody sees and understands why we're doing it, then even if they don't agree with it, they're aware of the problem. For just people and to know that it's, uh, it's an understanding that there is a problem in our society today that we are not treated, like we are treated as second class citizens. And to know that that's acknowledged means a lot to me. To know that it's, we're not just shoved into a corner somewhere and oh, they're just they're just those people. You become, rather than those people, you become an us, and that's really important. The purpose of the Day of Silence is to create a safe environment for students regardless of their sexual orientation and gender expression. On April 5th, ASAP and the Office of Cultural Life came together to bring author and speaker Tim Wise to campus to explain post-racial politics. People think that we should um, sort of move beyond talking about race and racism, that we shouldn't talk about it as much, we should downplay it, um, that we should talk about other subjects, and I'm challenging that in my book and in my speeches. The idea to me is that we really do have to talk about race and racism. We're not post-racial, so we shouldn't be uh, following a politics that says we're post-racial. Wise spoke about racial issues, giving examples from his life to the audience. We're going to say something stupid or say the wrong thing or say something that causes someone else to think that we're bigots, and so then we shut down. And ultimately, no one really eases into these conversations well. So, I'm going to ease into the one this evening. And I'm going to do it by telling you a story that I hope will make a point about the topic of race. Benetta Jones, a Monmouth College student, has hopes for the audience of this speech. You know, speaking to an audience that had, you know, a variety of uh, racial mixture, and that people could hear this and, you know, really go home and think about it and, you know, see how it pertains to their lives or their friends' lives. Tim Wise's speech was part of ASAP's new perspective events, which will continue next school year. In the midst of the end of the semester, a light was shown on a different topic. Jamie Shingothi is in the newsroom. Jamie? Questions in Dark, a sex education event was held in the Tartan Room last Tuesday. A sex education event was held in the Tartan Room last Tuesday. Executive Director and Health Education Coordinator German Cooper provided a unique way to get her message across. Students gathered to learn more about sex education by playing various games to learning serious facts. I feel hopefully at least one person got the message and will make a good decision down the road. It was an effective conversation. Usually it gives them something to think about because sex is a topic we all like to talk about and discuss, but how can we do it in a fun way versus just sitting in the classroom? If you would like more information, go to familyplanningservices.net.
Haley. Thanks, Jamie. Last Wednesday, the Battle of the Classes brought students to the main dining room for ASAP after hours. One team from each class competed in challenges that tested their knowledge, ability, and sense of humor. These fun-filled games included Jeopardy, balancing dice on popsicle sticks, a three-legged race around the dining room buffet, and much more helped students get out of their dorm room and have fun with their classmates. It was really competitive and really fun, and I won, so that was good. Me and Caitlin did the three-legged race. I like trivia. I like to watch Jeopardy, so that was really fun. Come share your musical talents at the next ASAP After Hours on April 27th from 9.30 until 11.30 in Scotland Yard. Taking a look at some events on campus this week. Easter break begins tomorrow at the end of the day. Classes resume on Tuesday. Also happening next Tuesday, the Challenge Athletes Foundation is hosting their second annual concert. The show includes acts from Professor Dick Johnston, the Scotsman, and Almost Famous 2.0. The show starts at 7.30 in the Dahl Chapel. Coming up after the break, both baseball and softball took the field against Augustana. Stay tuned for this week's sports highlights. The Fighting Scots baseball team took on Augustana last Monday and were stuck in a pitcher's duel that only lasted one hour and 40 minutes. The Scots took, on, took the diamond Monday against Augustana College. Augustana came in ranked as 14th best team in the nation, but the Scots gave in everything they had. After nine innings of tough pitching, the Scots eventually fell 3-0. to zero. The Scots got a strong performance from pitcher Scott Kempel, who went seven innings, giving up just three hits and one run. The loss puts the Scott at a record of 13-7. and seven. After winning both games of a doubleheader at home on Saturday against Knox, the Scots traveled to Galesburg to face the Prairie Fire again this Saturday. The softball team also faced Augustana last Wednesday. The Scots dropped both games of the doubleheader to the Vikings 5-2 and 6-2. In both games, the Vikings got off to a quick start, scoring at least two runs in the first innings of both games. The Scots traveled to Iowa tomorrow to play a doubleheader against Cornell. The Monmouth College Fighting Scots men's golf team is in full swing. Kyle McEwen takes us to the links. The team has captured five titles in the 11 seasons since men's golf was reinstated in 2000. In spite of losing many seniors last year and having 10 new players, the team still has three players with national championship experience. Sophomore Brandon Kemmerling, junior and Monmouth native Sean McNamara, and senior Rodney Clayton. Coach Dave Ragone feels, however, that despite the success, misconceptions remain regarding the program. They just think that golfers are country clubbers and go out there and uh, drink fruity drinks and, uh, and put their feet up and relax. Um, it's quite the opposite. Our guys work really hard year-round uh, to become better student-athletes and to become better golfers. Over the last two years, the team won the Midwest Conference and qualified for NCAA National Tournament play. But Ragone says the team cannot rest on its laurels. We're always chasing another title. We're never repeating because it's always new faces, new crew, new makeup, new chemistry. So we're always chasing another title. For MCTV, I'm Kyle McEwen. The Scots will play this Friday and Saturday in the Scott Fire Invitational. Haley and Michelle will be back after the break. Here are the, your scores for your Fighting Scots.
Welcome back. Last Thursday, Blue Key sponsored a talent show called Scotlight. The show featured not only students, but staff as well. The performers' talents varied from singing and playing guitar to reading poetry and dancing. In end, three performers were deemed winners. Brooke John won third place title for her poetry reading, followed by Connor Shields in second place who performed an original song, and in first place was Robert Cook who performed a solo on the drums. The show raised over $450 for the Monmouth Area Park District. It's a summer program for the students around town and some of the surrounding communities. They come and they participate in activities and it just is a community building event during the summer. For more information on Blue Key and the events they hold, you can visit the Monmouth College website. And that's MCTV This Week. I'm Kendra Newlin. And I'm Haley Turner. Make sure you tune in next week for a new edition of MCTV This Week. And I'm Michelle Nutting. You can also watch us on the web by going to monm.edu slash mctv. Have a good break.